Let's find the nth derivative of f of x equals sine of x. How do you compute all the higher derivatives of sine? Well, let's go through it step by step. Now, technically speaking, there is such a thing called the zeroth derivative. Uh, the zeroth derivative means you've actually taken no derivatives. And so this would be just the original function sine of x. Okay. The first derivative we've proven previously is equal to cosine. The derivative of sine is equal to cosine. But we've also computed the derivative of cosine. The derivative of cosine is itself negative sine, which because we know the derivative of sine, sticking a negative one in front of it just means we can factor the negative one out by limit uh, by derivative properties. This tells us that the third derivative of sine, which is the derivative of negative sine, would then be negative cosine of x. For which then, if we keep on going, we see that the fourth derivative you know, we're going to keep on going for a while because we're looking for the nth derivative. We want to find a general pattern here. If we take the fourth derivative of sine here, that is the derivative of a negative cosine, taking that negative sine out in front, we're going to get negative times the derivative of cosine, which is a negative sine. But as that's now a double negative, we see that the derivative here is going to be sine of x. Now, you'll notice here that I started a new column. That wasn't because I ran out of space. It's because I actually have the same function sine again. If we calculate the, the fourth derivative, the fifth derivative is actually what we're on right now. If we take the derivative of sine, we're going to get cosine again. And if you're going to take the sixth derivative, that means we have to take the derivative of cosine, which is a negative sine. And if we're going to take the seventh derivative, then you're going to take the derivative of negative sine, which is going to be a negative cosine. And then if you're going to take the eighth derivative... Well, you're going to take the derivative of negative cosine, which is, again, a sine of x. And you see how this pattern keeps on going. If we take the ninth derivative, you're going to end up with a cosine of x. If you take the tenth derivative, the tenth derivative here, you end up with a negative sine of x. If you take the eleventh derivative of sine, you're going to end up with a negative cosine of x. And if you take the twelfth derivative, it's just going to be sine again. It's going to start over and over and over again. And so what I would like to do here is to try to summarize what we just have seen. If we want to take the nth derivative of sine of x right here, you're going to get the following basically four options. You're going to get sine of x whenever you have a multiple of four, right? So like the zero derivative, the fourth derivative, the eighth derivative, the twelfth derivative. Every time you get a multiple of four, you're going to start, you're going to get back to sine. You're going to get cosine cosine of x whenever you're a multiple of 4 plus 1. So like 1, 5, 9, 13. You're always going to get the next one down. Um, the next one you would see would be, be a negative sine of x, for which this happens when you get a multiple of 4 plus 2. So that is when you get an even number that's not actually multiple of 4, like 2, 6, 10, 14. You're always going to get a negative sine of x. And then lastly, you'll get negative cosine of x whenever you're looking at n equals 4k plus 3. That is, if you're 3 more than a multiple of 4, or you could say 1 less than a multiple of 4, you're always going to get negative cosine. So like 3, 7, 11. With those patterns in mind, we can actually predict what these derivatives are going to be. So if you want to do something like, let's take the derivative, uh, let, let's take the derivative of f the 101st derivative, right? Maybe you think you're like you're thinking about Dalmatians or something like that. You want to take the 101st derivative of sine. Well, if you're taking the derivative 101 times, it turns out that you can ignore any multiples of four because every multiple of four will just give you back a sine. Notice that 101 is actually equal to 100 plus one, where 100 is four times 25. So what this tells you is that. You're going to cycle through this, this cycle. You're going to go through the cycle sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine, sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine, 25 times. And then you're going to end up with one. So the 101st derivative is actually the same thing as just the first derivative, uh, which is equal to cosine. So we can calculate uh, the derivatives of sine for arbitrarily large powers. I should mention that cosine is going to do a very similar statement. It's just it's offset by one. Uh, so you have to change some of these numbers. But again, as you take powers of cosine, uh, it'll go through this cycle over and over again. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The second derivative is negative cosine. The third derivative is positive sine. The fourth derivative is cosine again. So we can predict higher and higher powers for sine and cosine. So this is actually a very important observation. Notice that sine 
is its own fourth derivative. Cosine is also its own fourth derivative. We have another function that kind of does something like that. Notice that if you take the derivative of e to the x, you get back e to the x. The natural exponential is a function for which it's its own first derivative. Now, sine and cosine are not quite there. They're a little bit slower than e to the x, but they're their own fourth derivatives. And because of that, fact of obser uh, that observation about derivatives, this actually kind of tells us one of the reasons why sine and cosine are such important functions. They're critical in they're critical tools for solving differential equations because they have these repetitive uh, derivative properties, just like e to the x. There'll be some other functions we will see in the future that behave like this, namely the hyperbolic trigonometric functions, that is cinch and cosh, but that's a tale for another day.